Well, good morning. It's about 35 degrees out here this morning. And uh, September the 1st, 2023. And I thought I'd do a video on racism. One of the controversial topics out there. And uh, before we get started in a dis discussion of racism, I think it's important to actually define racism, what it really means, because when you define it, then you realize that there aren't actually that many people that are truly racist. Um, racist is not saying that there are differences between different ethnicities, ethnicities or races of people. Uh, racism, by dictionary definition, is a system of belief where somebody thinks that their race is superior to all others and that other races you know inferior races should be eliminated and of course that is never a stand that a bible believing christian can take because we understand that god created the different ethnicities you go back to the book of genesis after the flood and you have god preserving noah and his three sons and each of those sons is given a unique prophecy and you have the three basic races of men that come from that. And then that, that divides into four different uh, boundaries from there. That's what the Bible teaches. I've done studies on it. And that's, if you, I disagree. Well, then you disagree with the Bible. It's not my interpretation. There's Japheth. And he, he's the father of the white Europeans and uh, all the descendants of the Japhetic people, the Isles of the Gentiles and things. Um, you have Ham, he's the father of the African and like the India Indian people. And then you have Shem, he's the father of the Oriental people and the Jews. And that's what the Bible teaches. And then they, they split off into four different regions. And so like with the white uh, Europeans, you would have, you know, the sort of the northern... Uh, barbaric people uh, in the Bible, again, speaking from the scriptures, the New Testament times, which would include my ancestry, the German and British types of people, that's my ancestry. And uh, and then you have the Mediterranean people, you know, Rome and Greece and, and things. And, you know, then you can get over into some other areas, but it's mostly just Europe. With the Shemitic people, you have the Jews being one, and then you'd have the, you know, Japanese, Korean, whatever, and the Chinese and things. I mean, I'm not going to go over all the different races. You can track that out through the scriptures. But those different ethnicities were there for a reason. And it isn't some kind of a thing of, well, when God created the black races, he made a mistake and they're terrible people. Not at all. God created them and he loves them as his unique creation. Same thing with all the others, the Orientals and things. You can't say, well, we need to eliminate the Chinese because they're just evil, horrible people. No, that's not true. That's not what God intended. Um, God created all the different people. You know, the little song that we used to sing in Sunday school when I was a boy, you know, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Well, that's true. So, to say I was raised as some kind of racist or whatever, because I'm a white man, and I am thankful for my, you know, white ancestral culture, well, that makes you racist. That's a news media thing to try to put down white people. It's just... That is a racist thing, um, you know. But this, the big problem that I have with racism is it's it's not uh, it's indiscriminate, if I can say it that way. Uh, you say, what do you mean? Well, if uh, racism is true and there are people of an inferior race, then you have to just blanket all people, uh, all whatever you want to make it. All white people are, you know, and you fill out the little racist card there, you know, what white people are all about. We all want to build empires. We all want to control other people and whatever else. Well, that's stupid. Same thing as saying that all black people are street thugs that, that mug people or whatever. That's stupid as well. You know, all uh, Jews are, 
you know, wicked Christ rejecting evil people. That's not true either. You see, that's the problem with this whole racist ideal. Um, and it's one of Satan's ways that he blinds the minds of people by coming out with these things and, and mocking people and, oh, you're racist, this is racist, that's racist. Um, there aren't really that many people that truly believe in the dictionary definition of racism. Okay, there aren't very many that I know of that believe that they're, they're the only race that's superior and all others should be eliminated. Um, you know, if you want to get into that stuff, you actually have to adopt evolutionary philosophy, which says that, you know, the preservation of favored races, I think is what uh, Charles Darwin's book, The Origin of the Species, and the preservation of favored races or something like that. I forget exactly how it was worded, but it was something along those lines. That's racism. That is true racism. But uh, saying, I believe that there are differences between the different people that God has made, um, that's not racism. Okay, that's just simply going along with Scripture. And, you know, being able to discriminate and say, you know, we each have unique characteristics, cultural traditions and things like that. Well, that's a good thing that's not some kind of a bad thing and um you know again there's just so much hypocrisy with the thing it just disgusts me you know there are people that say that i'm a racist because i'm against interracial marriage well i'm against interracial marriage because i believe in pre preserving unique culture and how do you preserve a culture your unique cultural ancestral ways when you are from two different cultures and two different ancestries that's the whole point. Um, you know, well, there was people in the Bible, you know, you get into the whole thing, uh, people that were interracially married and there was things and God blessed them and whatever. And, and you get into all this stuff, this fighting back and forth. And uh, I just, you know, I'm very simple, very logical in my thinking. And, you know, I don't hate anybody. And, you know, this thing of calling me a racist because... I think that you should try to preserve your ancestral ways and your culture, how God made you. I mean, if God came down and he saw, you know, these people coming together, they're all coming together. They're of one language, one speech and everything. And the Lord says, okay, I'm going to confound their languages so that they split up. Did he change that? Did God get to a point where he said, you know, I really shouldn't have done that. That was kind of narrow minded of me. I think I'm going to go back on that and just say everybody come together. You know, and everybody coming together, wouldn't that be a new world order? Wouldn't that be the Antichrist system? I think it would. So, but you know, this, this word racist, it's just, it gets thrown around. And again, a lot of Christians, they, they kind of cower and they, they, oh, I don't want to say anything. It might be misconstrued as being racist and, and whatever. Um, don't worry about that stuff. Don't let the devil get you to the point where you start to be afraid to proclaim what the Bible plainly teaches. And uh, God has, has set boundaries, and those boundaries are supposed to be there because multiculturalism actually destroys um, people's ability to look for the Lord. Um, and the Bible talks about that. I'll read here in a minute, get my little Bible out here. Um, you know, I try to quote a lot of scripture from memory when I do these little walk and talks, but it's good to have a little Bible along too. Um, we get to the book of Acts here. But, you know, there's a lot of these modern movements, it's all about trying to make you ashamed of what the scripture says. And you must never be ashamed of the Bible, the King James Bible. Uh, the Lord actually warns about that. People that are ashamed of, of Him and His words the Lord will be ashamed of you when he comes. And that'd be a pretty bad thing to have the Lord say, hey, you know what, I'm ashamed of you. But we'll read here, Acts chapter 17, verse 26. It says, And it hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Okay, bounds of their habitation. Why? Why are there bounds of habitation? Uh, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after the Lord, 
or after after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us all right the reason that god has set boundaries is so that people will seek the lord that's why it isn't some kind of a thing of god puts us all in cages and he wants us to be you know hate other people that aren't like us and things no no but through your unique ancestral culture and heritage um god will reveal things to you you know uh weston a price um he was a dentist back in the 1800s and he started to do, to do some research into ancestral ways and things and he would go and he would meet with primitive you know cultures quote unquote primitive uh in other words not westernized and he would see that they had really good health very good health and he would say you know what do you eat here and each you know group of people they had their own unique foods from the natural surroundings and that made them be in very good health hmm and it wasn't in, until the western diet came in and the processed foods and everything else that that started to actually uh make them be in poor health um and it's not just that i mean there's spiritual things as well uh there's a lot of places where um I could move to and I could live and I just wouldn't feel right there. I wouldn't fit in. And, um, you know, there's people, some of you out there that you're from, your ancestry was probably from more of a Mediterranean climate or a warmer climate or whatever. You wouldn't feel right up here. You know, I'm walking around with a t-shirt and a lightweight flannel on and it's 35 degrees and, you know, no hat or anything. I feel fine. I feel great. Um, a lot of you would be, you know, winter clothes on right now and whatever, and you know, you'd be freezing. And I'm not making fun of you, you know, because if I'd go down to where you're at and it'd be 95 degrees, you're walking around saying, oh, it's actually a nice day. And I'd be saying, I think I'm going to die, you know, and see, that's the whole point here. Appreciate how God made you. Appreciate uh, your ancestral ways. Understand those things. You say, well, where am I from? Who am I? Oh, uh, what can I trace my lineage back to and whatever that's where God can really bless you and um, if you don't have that if you don't understand that well um, you can live you can survive you can do whatever um, but I don't think that you're going to reach your full potential and uh, so you know there's all flesh is grass, okay? Um, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, the Bible teaches. And you, you always have to remember that. Uh, and as a, as a preacher, I can come out and I can compromise and I can just tell you, well, you know, it doesn't matter, this doesn't, it's not important, whatever else. Or I can tell you what God's standards are how God intended things to be um, and say, you know, do your best to try to get back to that. And that's what I try to do. Um, so, but uh, don't, don't ever let the devil's people threaten you with their little words that they come up with, which they aren't even following most of the time. Uh, oh, you're a racist. You're this, you're that. Um, that's nonsense. And of course, you know, as it is with the, the devil's people, they control through fear. And so they'll come out and they'll say, uh, you know, oh, you, you're prejudice. Remember, that's what it was when I was a younger man, you know. Oh, it's, you're, you're prejudice. And now it's, oh, you're racist. And then it's, you know, misogynistic and, you know, and all this other homophobic and all these other things. They just keep trying to bring you down with their little threatening words and their threatening speech. Now, as a Christian, you can't care about that. As a Christian, oh, that's bright. Uh, you just have to say, you know, I'll serve the Lord and I'll follow his word. Uh, ooh, sunlight right in the face. It's coming up. It's low right now. Comes up, you know, as time goes by. As we get towards winter, the um, the sun actually will just it doesn't go up real high anymore. It just kind of stays low because we're up here in the north. 
and uh, makes for some interesting challenges for our solar panels because in the winter we don't get nearly as much solar because the sun does not go up as high in the sky. Um, and that's not a theory, I can see that. Okay, so, um, whatever on that. But, uh, so, just wanted to do a little video to encourage you to stand by the Word of God and uh, be thankful for who you are. Um, whatever your ethnicity is, race, whatever you want to call it, um, thank the Lord for it. Embrace it. And uh, don't assimilate to the culture around you. Be different. Uh, you get into eternity, and um, the Lord has the different kindreds preserved. And the, the, they're saying about, you know, has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation. There's distinction. You say, what about Galatians chapter 3, verse 28? There's neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, bond nor free. Well, yes, there is. There is. Um, you know, there is simply a difference. You know, we're not all unigender people when you get saved or something. Of course there's a difference. What Paul's writing about there is he's saying there's no racism within the Lord. There's no, um, God is no respecter of persons. You, you know, come to the Lord as a, as a saved woman. The Lord's not going to say, oh, you're just a woman, you know. No, he's not going to do that. Hey, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm a pure-blooded Jew from the tribe of such and such. You, you know, should have extra favor for me. No, he's not going to do that. Um, that's what Paul's writing about in Galatians 3:28, because I'll get that thing, you know, from people that are, you know, for uh, miscegenation, for bringing everybody together and destroying culture, um, which is what it is. Let's call it what it is. And I'll get that from these people. Galatians 3.28. Okay, well, if you want to use that to get rid of racial distinction, then you have to get rid of female and male distinction. How are you doing that? Uh, without being an abomination in God's sight. So, <laughs> but, uh, <sighs> so just as a little way of helping people understand what I'm doing right now, besides walking in the woods, um, been working on getting some playlists together so we can create some new pages on the website um, my old website that I had I had a lot of material on there it took me years to get it all up onto there and build things and whatever else and uh, so it's not going to be just a the new kjvm.org website isn't just going to be right up to the level that the old website was right away it's going to take some time uh, to get it all uploaded, to get all the work done and things. I'm going to be writing some articles in the future to put into the written article, written studies section. Um, but uh, I have a lot of plans on the website, but you know that takes me some time to work on that stuff. And then I'm not able to do, you know, real in-depth studies. And um, so I'm going to be Looking at some different subjects, I've had a lot of people request different sermons. I always appreciate that. You know, could you do a sermon on name the subject? I try to do that. And, uh, but you know, it takes, it takes time to get all this other stuff done. Plus I'm a father, plus I have this property to take care of. There's a lot of things that go along with living off grid. It's not a, um, real simple life and everything's just comes easy for you uh, you know we're getting towards winter now firewood's done but I have to start thinking about you know do we have enough goldenrod tea do we have enough you know even chai you know how soon are the apples going to be ready let me show you the apples here uh, walk back through the weeds here it gets soaking wet in the morning but that's okay so Hopefully you can see the apples in the tree here. They're starting to look pretty good. It's just one of our apple trees. You can see little red apples throughout the, up in there and everything else. So it's exciting as we're transitioning from summer into fall. Um, you know, I have to think about these things, get ready for winter. 
because winter here is uh, pretty long, which is what we like. It's our favorite time of the year. Um, summer's nice, has its benefits and advantages, but we prefer winter. Um, so, I guess I'll conclude the video here, but uh, please do keep us in your prayers. Um, that the Lord leads and the Lord directs me to preach what needs to be preached. And uh, again, let me explain the purpose of these videos. Uh, you know, it's kind of weird because as I'm, you know, getting older and whatever else here, <laughs> I've been on YouTube for a long time and there's so many times I've thought I need to do a study on whatever only to realize oh, actually I did one nine years ago, 10 years ago, or whatever. I'm starting to forget, you know, a lot of these uh, Baptist preachers, I know Ruckman did this and Sam Gipp did it as well, or he's done it, but they'll, they'll have a few sermons and then they preach them over and over again when they go visit these church buildings. And um, I have never done that. I might re-preach an old sermon just to get it in better quality or whatever, but I don't, I don't have, you know, uh, 50 sermons that I preach just as a revolving thing or whatever. Um, I try to avoid that. And so a lot of what I'm doing right now, you say, well, why aren't you doing doctrinal studies? Because I already did in the past. You know, this is not a real heavy doctrine video, but these videos help people to come along. They see the new material and then I can link to the old videos, the old studies. Um, most of my stands have remained the same over the years, so I can just point people to studies I've done eight, nine years ago or whatever, and it's still good, to, as, just as good today as it was back then. So, and you can see that way that there's age to this ministry. It's not just some, you know, little YouTube wonder thing or something that I just popped up out of nowhere and, you know, my, you know, beliefs are subject to change or something. No, that's not the case. So, but, uh, just to explain that. So, um, I have to get ready to get down to the office here. Uh, we still are uh, having our our vehicles, vehicle inspection started in, oh boy, what, August or something, I think? <laughs> Early August. And, you know, just supply chain stuff going on and having to, you know, the garage where I go to, they have a lot of other things going on you know they he drives uh trucks and things semi trucks drives dump truck you know so it's kind of we'll fit you in when we can so it's been going on for about two months now getting two vehicles inspected the our jeep cherokee made a lot of problems because of trying to figure out what was wrong with it finally got that done it's finally running okay um it's kind of weird because i don't really trust it right now it just after it's let you sit for so many you know, so many times I kind of am a little bit gun shy with it now. Uh, I just don't trust going way back in the middle of nowhere like I used to do because I'm afraid it, you know, the parts will break or something. And I don't know what to do about that. Um, not very fun to think about that a lot of our replacement parts for older vehicles are coming from China, communist China and wherever. So, you know, they can go out at any time. They're not the same level of quality that uh, they once were insane um but you know there's that to deal with but uh, hopefully today our uh, old ambulance is going to be inspected that had to have a lot of work done to it uh, to get it inspected and um there's been a bunch of jobs i've been putting off because i need that to do the jobs with because it can haul a lot of stuff inside and uh and then we have our car that we drive as well and um, and that needs to be inspected yet. It actually, the inspection was in August. So I'm way beyond that. Um, today being September 1st, so it's a month out of inspection. But what can I do? You know, they, they couldn't get the other stuff done right away. So, you know, it's stuff that you deal with. You know, it's not that I'm being persecuted or anything like that. Here's the Blue Jay over. Um, you know, it's, there's no persecution involved with that. It's just that it's life. You know, uh, when you're a man, you have to put up with things like that. You, you know, 
a lot of my younger viewers you might not understand it because you're living with your parents or whatever and you know there's people that can drive you around or if you have a vehicle well you know you take it to the garage you have somebody that can pick you up and whatever. we don't have that stuff um, I have to take care of all that stuff myself so you know it is what it is uh, you do your best in life as a Christian and you have to combine the worldly life and the spiritual life uh, the Bible talks about a married man cares cares for the things of the world how he may please his wife um, I have to do that stuff I have to think about you know what should we do with this property should we sell it and move or should we try to build eventually or you know it's just all that stuff and you can everybody out there you can give me your advice and you can say oh brother you should do this and you should do that you're not me okay you don't know the situations and whatever else and I'm not going to share all of that stuff just to make that clear um, but you know one other thing I'll say I think one other thing it might be more but uh, one other thing I will say and that is that uh, oh I wish you would just do all real detailed Bible studies just real detailed Bible studies okay well if you came here and you were actually walking with me and all I wanted to do was just give you real detailed Bible studies you might be you know kind of saying well, what's, what are you going through, brother? What are personal things and whatever else? What can I, I pray for you on? Well, let me just teach you on the doctrine of prayer and, and why it's important and how you pray and whatever. This is more of an intimate type of a thing here, these walk and talks where I can actually, you know, tell you some of the things that we go through, some of our struggles and other things too. Yes, I'll talk about the Bible, but it's also a time for me to kind of share with you, my viewers, um, a little bit about what we go through uh, right now um, Catherine and Oliver are, are doing some work on the property in terms of uh, taking down some um, plants and things that we want we need to get rid of they said that they would like to do that this morning when I'm out doing my little walk and talk video so that's what they're doing um, so they're not here with me they're not talking uh, Oliver a lot of times likes to walk along with me and our dog. I don't know where he's at right now Probably getting into trouble someplace <laughs> likes to do that, but uh, So just to give you a little bit of an explanation I know some of you a lot of people are really enjoying these videos some are complaining and griping and when are you going to go back to regular preaching? Are you really in ministry? I don't really know if we should support you uh, The joys of uh, Casting pearls before swine many times. They turn again and then rend me. Um, another portion of scripture there. So, but that is going to be it. Uh, little bird over there in the tree, if you can hear that. But uh, chirping away. So, that will be it. And we'll see you in upcoming videos. Again, thank you very much for your support. Thank you for watching.